Hello and welcome to the Studiotopia Creative Question Challenge. The Creative Question Challenge, CQC, is a new brainstorming format in which speakers explore and present creative questions in a 30-minute dialogue. Audience members can submit their questions as comments in the YouTube stream and they'll be relayed to us uh, in due course. Studiotopia is a European initiative that invites scientists to work alongside artists to address issues of sustainability. The artists and scientists will work together over a 17-month journey, and that journey starts today. I'm Christos Karras. I'm moderating the discussion today, and I'm the executive director of the Onassis uh, Stegi, which is a partner uh, in the Studio Tokyo program. Uh, we're really happy to have with us, uh, on the one hand, 3137 uh, from Greece, which is an artist-run space based in Athens, founded by Chrysanthi Komianaiki, Kosmas Nikolaou, and Paki Vlasopoulou in 2012. The collective has presented research projects in collaboration with arts professionals, scientists and friends, as well as exhibitions and one-off projects like performances and talks. 3137 has also established the immaterial institution, Gabriela, which deals with issues of sustainability, labor and institutionalization, questioning the role of artists' initiatives. And also our resident scientist, Audrey Ngomsik from France, uh, but currently in Belgium, has been driving her career towards fostering, developing, disseminating, implementing and commercializing innovations in green chemistry and sustainable development in order to reduce the carbon footprint of companies. She has started cleaning the pollution resulting from industrial processes and then moved upstream, developing sustainable processes there. Her work has been done developing green technologies based on biomaterials, ionic liquids, nanoparticles, and supercritical fluids, targeting waste valorization solutions and using renewable resources such as algae. Well, it's really great to be with you, uh, um, unfortunately, on online only and not together somewhere like Linz, for example. Uh, mm -hmm. But anyway, um, it, what's really tremendous is that both of you, both groups of you, all three of you, um, have, uh, I think, a sort of activist uh, relationship to your practice. Uh, 3137 is constantly questioning what it means uh, to, in, to aim for social change, societal evolution through art. And Audrey is, as we heard, really working very, very profoundly in order to change the way in which companies work and how they affect the environment. And today, I think, you know, um, uh, it's time that we really do sit down, or rather actually get up and do things concretely about uh, the major crisis of our time and climate crisis and environment is one of these. And I'd like to hear from both of you, uh, starting with uh, Audrey, how you think that your practice uh, actually does uh, um, fulfill an act this role and how you imagine it might fulfill this role better in collaboration uh, with the other partner, in this case with the artist. So Audrey, over to you. Uh, hi, <laughs> good afternoon everybody. So thank you for uh, this opportunity. So what I would say is that uh, as a scientist, um, usually we often like working with our peer, peer meaning chemists, work with chemists, physicists, physicists, biologists, biologists, and all the climate questions, the sustainable questions that made us stop working in silos and work together. Okay, so because to be able to solve them, but all the scientists have to work together, so there's no side, side there's no working only with people who understand what they do anymore. I have, you have to explain it to other scientists who are not in your field. And it's, it's basically, even if it's science, it's, general, it's as if they were talking French to some, Canadian to others, uh, Belgian French to others. And so we kind of see the framework, but we don't understand really the, the, the deep in, the deep inside that how are you going to affect us so that's the a thing and one of the most important thing in sustainable intelligence is make sure that people that are not scientists understand it because it affects everybody like the general public and they need to understand how they are they are empowered to make a change because if because i do definitely believe that every little counts Okay, and that even if companies, even the biggest one, are the one who have to lead the change because they're the one who pollute the most, if we if we think of all the individuals on Earth, all together we pollute as many as much. Okay, the problem is that no, we don't understand it. The only communication that we have is that you are destroying the planet because of you. We're going to die. You need to change. And I think that collaborating with artists with a lot to have a more positive uh, communication. 
And as, as you've seen during COVID-19, lots of people turn to art, you know, to get better when we were confined and everything. So, so I actually think, you know, that we will usually say, uh, scientists see the world with their brain and artists see the world with their hearts. And then you, you can merge both so that we can make profound change. Yeah, I think we, we need brains and hearts, so it's uh, definitely yeah. a good strategy. Um, <laughs> three, three, one, three, seven. Tell us a bit more about your perception of the role of activist role in art and how you think this might be enhanced through the uh, collaboration with the scientists. So to be honest, I think that um, activism is a very specific thing that it's mostly happening outside of, of the organized or of the institutional um, art sector. So maybe it's good to, to keep this in mind. So I would agree actually with Audrey thinking of activism as a, first of all, as being engaged with what you do, uh, try to involve and include as many as possible focus in exchange and in dialogue and try of course to shape things and to change things and to twist them so we are very very oriented to the local context we are very interested in opening the space and also whatever we do in a way where we are to be open and to as much people as possible. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, to be an activist, I mean, it's of course to be active and that's good um, with us too. Uh, but it's another thing that um, has another connotation and it's more, I would say, to a street level or to a strictly political level. But in this case, at the same time, we see <clears throat> activism, let's say, as a way of uh, including uh, more uh, people to what we do, to, to not just produce uh, art or objects, but mostly to focus on creating a, a bigger audience and uh, a bigger community who uh, is engaged with what we do. And, uh, and of course, to bring in front um, like the topics that are important for our living and existence in all the matters like mm -hmm. environmental and political and social of course yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean no, no doubt activism you're right activism doesn't sit well with institutionalism that's true uh but you know i think the main thing about an activist let's say stance is that we're sort of aiming to actually produce uh you know to change things concretely physically structurally uh, in the world we live. Uh, and that's, uh, that brings me on to a, to a second question, which is related to what you both uh, just said and the notion of sustainability. And you know, the, the project Studio Utopia is kind of focusing officially around the, the UN uh, uh, Sustainable Development Goals, uh, which are very useful because they are uh, an internationally accepted framework, uh, which underlines some of the, some, um, many, but some uh, of, the, uh, of the major problems that, uh, that our global community is, uh, is suffering. Uh, but I'd like to uh, discuss uh, the notion of development that's in there, the sustainable development goals, uh, because development uh, still means, you know, a continuation of what humanity has been trying to achieve uh, over the past year, decades, centuries, which is somehow always doing more, getting further, getting, getting more, getting uh, more out of nature, more out of each other, etc. And I wanted to bring the discussion a bit to the notion, uh, notions of, of degrowth or circularity in the economy. In other words, concepts that somehow uh, suggest that we don't need to do more. Maybe we don't need to develop. What we need, perhaps, is to find a much, much fairer distribution and a much better way of doing what we do. And I'd be really interested to hear whether ideas like that um, might affect the way you work together. Um, uh, Audrey. So, uh, to come back to the SDG goal, Sustainable Development Goal, uh, the, the, what actually um, linked uh, 3137 with me in the, in the way we, we've seen the work is that, you know, there are 17 goals and we were very, very, very um, connected in a couple of them. And one of them is, uh, um, sorry, is responsible consumption and production. Okay, which is the goal number 12. And of course, the number 17, which is partnership for the goals. 
Okay, but let's go to the number 12. So what we, so around that goal, what we've seen is that, uh, yes, as you are saying, uh, development is not, uh, should be seen differently, okay? And, but for, for us, it was more about how to go on, um, how to change the way of consuming, okay? And today, so that means find a different way of consuming that, that doesn't mean it has to be uh, worse, it will be better because it will be innovative. It will be better because it will be fairer, okay? And one of the ways of doing that is, is what is called the circular economy, for example. So what we used to do, everybody, is that we, we use resources, we make a product, we use it, we throw it away, okay? And the point today is to, what we try to do more and more today is we use resources, we create a product, we, we recycle it as many times as we can, and then it goes it goes away, okay? The circular economy is to try to not throw everything away, anything away, have no waste, okay? By doing that, and at the same time, use less resources, okay? But in the, this use less resources, it also makes sure that the people that give us the resources are well paid, have enough for themselves to be able to live. So it's it, for me, it's not so much uh, a decrease of the growth, but it's more uh, even repartition of it. Okay, and in, in the way um, we approach that, uh, in fact, 3137 was really perfect for me in that idea because I always wonder, is art sustainable in fact? Okay, if you want to work, so me, I work on sustainability, but is art sustainable? Okay, and so when you, for me, when you are a collective, so when you do different art, you know, in the same uh, collective art, that means in on the paper that you can use what one, one artist doesn't use, the second artist will use it, uh, what uh, the, the waste of an artist can be the resources for another one, for example, and that answer in its all uh, a circular economy for me. Right. So, yeah. so that's, that's how we could we can approach it, this. Right, that's, that's true, and it's especially, uh, especially critical, let's say, in uh, the sector I come mainly from, which is the performing arts, that's a very big I issue there. Uh, 3137, what, what's your take on, on, on this? Um, I think it's, uh, we think it's uh, very important to have some time when uh, you don't produce, when you uh, can take a step back from what you do and your uh, everyday life and methodology, met methodology. and um, we think that collaboration actually uh, um, can promote this act because you can listen to different voices, either if it's uh, between uh, the three of us that we are both uh, visual artists, uh, but with completely different practices, or uh, when, we, um, when we collaborate with uh, other professionals and uh, we, um, uh, we try to have their input to our work. Um, so this is like a process of continuous learning and uh, this is the moment when you can uh, actually t take your uh, uh, position outside of uh, what you do and um, uh, add the aspects uh, that the other, uh, the other brings. So actually when the focus is more in the process of learning and sharing knowledge and experience, then uh, the product, the thing that you do in the end can be more participatory, mm -hmm. more based in, in the experience and in the sharing of time and knowledge rather than observing something that it stands there forever and you used, I don't know how many materials yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, we're near the halfway mark now, a bit past it. I don't see any audience questions yet. So I'd like to follow up with, a, with another question, which has to do with the whole idea of art science collaboration, which is so much at the center of this uh, Studiotopia project. And you know, to raise the question of 
a translation in practice. Um, uh, you know, artists work with one set uh, of concepts, methodologies, uh, practices, and scientists have another set of concepts, methodologies, and, and practices. Uh, and I'd be really curious to see uh, how you imagine you can translate these into the other's language and perhaps find some common uh, terrain. Uh, 3137, would you like to start on this one? So, um, uh, I think it's interesting that both uh, of the artists, um, as also the scientists, uh, start of a similar point, let's say, which is understanding uh, the world and understanding uh, um, similar social, uh, global uh, issues and crises. But uh, it's true that we have uh, completely different languages. And uh, it's also true that uh, the, our audience, especially the contemporary art audience, is very, very small, uh, which is... Uh, and, and we use actually uh, ab quite abstract uh, language, let's say. Uh, so uh, collaborating with uh, scientists is like... A, trying to to manage your tools in a way that they have they, they can understand you the other understands you so it makes uh, the language easier so it's easier to communicate with broader audiences as well yeah so the process teach you how to try to explain to each other and to be understandable and translate and also be open to the mis uh, misunderstandings that is a fact in our life. Yeah. But in way yeah, that the process actually prepares you for something that in the end can be also more um, uh, easy to share and to uh, yeah with others. Right, right. Yeah, that's you're right. That is a very basic part of what it is to be to be an artist. Perhaps scientists are more used to working in their own sector. Perhaps translation is more complicated uh, for them. But then again, maybe not. Audrey. In fact, uh, they, they always they, you always have artists working with scientists because if not, you will not know how the DNA molecule looks like. You will not know how your organs, the heart, how is it? You know, their their anatomy is art. It's someone someone drawing the interior of a body. So, but for us, uh, even if you look at the chemical molecule, uh, you know how to draw them and everything. It can be, it, but it's very rational art. Meaning, for us, every piece has a sense. You know, a carbon can be linked only with four hydrogen, uh, four link. So, so the old the old molecule at the end can look like a piece of art. But for us, it's very rational one. So what I, what I would like with that collaboration is to demystify science. Voilà. As you were saying, make it more understandable, more approachable for everybody, and, and, and realize that every big concept, a small little concept that everybody can understand. Voilà. So it's really demystify the whole thing. Right, right. Yeah, which is a very important, uh, very important thing, and I think we've been seeing more of that. Um, you know, as a lot of scientific issues have become more public uh, yes. over the last years, I think there has been uh, an understanding on the part of the science community that if you know, as they become more preoccupied uh, with you know the state of the world, uh, that this has to come out in a more in a more public way. So I guess okay. being a scientist today is very different from what being a scientist might have been even twenty or thirty years ago. Yeah. Uh, I I can imagine. Um, still no audience question, so I have one more for you, um, which is um, more, to, again, to do with the, uh, the process of, uh, of working uh, together. And I'd like to sort of ask you, uh, uh, all three of you, what, you know, when you started on this uh, project, on the Studiotopia project, what was it uh, about this collaboration that really got you excited? And what did you imagine uh, that the, the outcome uh, of working in this transdisciplinary way uh, might be? What, what, ideally, what would you love to get out of this? Uh, so when, uh, when I've seen the proposal, I was really excited because it was about uh, sustainable development goals. And I think that's really the big issue for everybody today. Uh, as you probably guess for now, for me, the whole concept of uh, circular economy is important. And it's important not only because uh, it is important for the planet, but because everybody can make, can do something about it. Okay, but the thing is that today it's really um, 
it's it really comes to uh, I'm doing something things wrong and I have to do it better. Okay, so I hope this art will say you can it's not you can do it differently. Okay, and so show with art how fun it can be, how not so terrible it is. I mean, everybody cannot do 100% right all the time, but there is a way of doing at least 50, 60% right, and that and that might be not for today. But use uh, art to make uh, people understand that uh, empower people to want to do something and change in a fun way. Three one three seven. And. Actually, we don't really know what to expect because we met uh, Audrey uh, a few months ago. Uh, but we are really excited about this collaboration and uh, we imagine to, to build a common ground together um, that uh, will host our ideas and to spend time together and focus on this process of uh, uh, learning from each other and we really want to learn from Audrey actually about many things that she focuses that um, she, works we, she uses at her practice and uh, in this way with uh, all this uh, um, knowledge exchange uh, we want to uh, question about what we will produce uh, finally, and uh, somehow to, to touch uh, more, uh, more focused uh, social issues that we are both uh, interested. And I think this uh, demystification that Audrey mm. said before yeah. for science is also something that you, Audrey, will experience also in the making of art. There is a lot to demystify there as well. And yeah, I think that this is the most important to understand each other and then to be to be ready to to share uh, what we do. Right. But yeah, and in the rational part, mm. sorry, excuse me, and the rational part of it, uh, how it comes to the arts and what it does. Right. We have we have one uh, audience question. So very quickly, because we only have six minutes left. The question is, would you say artistic practices with an activist approach create a new contemporary arts audience that diverges from contemporary arts, or does it challenge the current audience? So very, very quickly, uh, 3137, would you like to start on this? Yeah, so, I mean, social life and um, the way the information is shared is like open. So I mean, social media is there. Contemporary art is, of course, one of the mainstream things for a specific group of people and etc. So definitely there are connections between people that they are making art and people that they are following art and activism. So I wouldn't go for a, gen for a, a movement in the contemporary art as activists, even if they are great artists that they are super important activists in the world. So we keep them uh, separate. But yeah, I hope for contemporary art to be uh, a tool and a megaphone for what is happening in, in, in the streets. OK. Uh, Olve? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen lots of uh, some shows about uh, who are denouncing, uh, you know, uh, uh, child pornography, uh, a woman uh, who are who are beaten at home, and that was really uh, powerful. So I really hope that this collaboration will be able to do the same for sustainable challenges. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, which brings me to the uh, uh, you know towards where I have to start wrapping wrapping this up. Uh, and I'd like to ask both teams or both both groups um, to to think of a me a question if you know we're thinking about this these hybrid forms that we want to emerge out of the collaboration between arts and science within the context of the problems we mentioned uh, to do with uh, sustainability in, in all its forms. So if you had to, if you had to ask one question, um, what, would it, what would it be? Uh, 3137, what would your question be? Um, let me check also the notes. <laughs> uh, yeah, because it was in the park. Now I can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was showing her the pieces, but she said. Uh, that yeah, how to take a step back. Uh, yeah, this is. Uh, I think it's a good point. Like, how can you take a step back from your own methodologies and uh, listen to the other? 
Yeah, and to leave your comfort zone and what we are mm -hmm. um, ready to leave behind. Yeah. And to yeah, offer and to take care of, of us and of the others or the creatures in the world. Yeah, all right. Uh, Audrey, what would your question be? One, you know, one, one, if you have one question to ask uh, to, to sum up the drive behind the project. It's uh, maybe how can uh, art participate in the scientific discour uh, discourse, you know, speech, and empower people to, uh, to act, to act positively. Yeah, it's amazing because I think, you know, as we've been discussing uh, the, the, the project, uh, more generally the Studiotopia project over the last few months, it really is, uh, I think, what, what, you know, what people are really concerned with is finding a way to, to reach audiences and make and change something in the way people evaluate the, the situation. And I think it's super interesting and exciting to see that uh, people believe that this combination of art and science, you know, two ways of interpreting the world uh, in a way together can actually make this change. So Thanks. if, you know, um, the, the, the last, my, my last challenge to you for, for today is to ask you both to think of, uh, uh, or three of you rather, to think of one, one sentence to, to sum up, uh, you know, sum up this project, uh, you know, coming from that, coming from that questioning, one sentence each, what, what would that be? Uh, Audrey, start with you. That would be, uh, uh, maybe, uh, let's, uh, I'm sure this partnership will be uh, great for, sustain for, um, for to raise awareness on sustainable goals. Right. 3137? Yeah, and to collaborate and exchange and uh, listen more than we speak. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a good thing. I don't thing. know why I ended up there. But <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Yeah, we have to listen. It's true. Yeah. Uh, we have to listen. I think, you know, um, uh, the, 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 this project is, uh, is about listening and about doing because, you know, uh, at the end of the day, we hope uh, that the situation will evolve in a way that will allow you all to actually work together i mean you know for those uh, for those listening to us who don't know the project from the from the inside the idea is that there should be residency periods uh, that audrey should come to athens for for some time and actually work with 3137 uh, in the city uh, in the space um, the idea is that the project should develop you know pop-up labs uh, activities that do have an outreach component um, and you know that will enable us to actually take steps towards reaching the kind of public that, that we're, we're talking about. So, you know, this really is uh, uh, what, what the whole thing is about. So let's just hope that we can uh, get there. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, let's uh, thanks, uh, thanks to Andrew Newman uh, for coordinating uh, uh, our participation in the project. Thanks to the whole Studiotopia team uh, for, for, you know, putting this whole European project together. Uh, congratulations and thanks to the Ars Electronica team for producing an amazingly rich festival uh, in such a very, very difficult circumstance. And thanks to all of you uh, who on a Sunday afternoon have been listening uh, to us. And let's hope we all meet again very soon uh, physically. In the meantime, bye-bye. Bye-bye.